Welcome to the Boating News Show. Coming up, we look at this week's news from the world of boating. We reveal the winner of that incredible giveaway prize from last week, the Simrad Cruise GPS. We check out a cool little boat for under five grand. We get some updates from the RNLI and we check out what could make docking your boat easier than ever before. Firstly, a shout out to MDL the UK's largest marine operator who are sponsoring this show. We'll hear more about MDL later. For now, let's get on and start this week's show. So this week in the world of boating news, we've learned that volunteer crew members at the RNLI have faced a crazily busy summer with new data revealing a dramatic increase in the number of water users needing to be helped by the charity's lifeboat crews compared to 2019. Now, this is obviously because a lot of people have taken to the water rather than holidaying abroad. Based on provisional incident reports from the RNLI's lifeboat stations around the UK and Ireland, there was a 64% increase in the number of recreational water users aided by the RNLI. Additionally, many lifeguards reported seeing an increase in the number of visitors to beaches around the coast. These newly released figures also cover people who got into difficulty while bodyboarding, using inflatables, kayaking or canoeing, kite surfing, paddle boarding, rowing, surfing, swimming, water skiing, windsurfing and dinghy sailing. So it covers all kinds of aspects of boat use and being near the water. This summer, 177 water users were aided whilst kayaking or canoeing, an increase of 84 people in comparison to 2019. The number of people who needed help from the RNLI lifeboat crews after getting into difficulties on inflatables more than doubled. We completely understand people wanting to hit the water, many possibly for the first time, especially with not being able to holiday abroad. So please do make sure that you are safe. Boating in all its forms can be great fun for all the family. However, the sea does need to be respected. We have lots of tuition videos on here. So jump onto our YouTube or Facebook and you'll see our live sessions with Paul Glatzel of Powerboat Training UK. We go through safety kit, things to think about before hitting the water. So if it's maybe your first time getting on board a boat or getting afloat somehow, take time to do some research and maybe call an RYA centre for some pointers. With the right kind of kit and knowledge, a huge amount of call outs could obviously be mitigated. Now. Talking about getting on the water for the first time, maybe you've been looking at kayaks, paddle boards, small inflatables, different affordable ways to be able to get afloat. I had a look at the Honda T32 as a viable option to get started boating with an engine for under three and a half grand. So check out what could be the world's smallest walk around video. Honda as a brand has been rated the number one vehicle in the UK for reliability, beating pretty much every brand out there. So it would make sense that this would be uh, a viable proposition to hit the water and have a reliable little boat. This is the T32 powered by a BF10 uh, 10 horsepower outboard. And this will push you along at about 20 miles an hour quite comfortably and be able to really do some exploring as well as be a perfect tender for your boat. I have used this, if you've seen on our Instagram stories from Torquay, I've headed to Dartmouth. I've done about 35 miles in the day. And also we've been caving and doing all kinds of different things with it as well. Um, today, we're gonna take it out and do a little bit of fishing. But before we do, I wanted to show you a couple of the features on this boat. So it's 3.2 meters long. It's uh, got an air deck, so you can roll it up and put it in the car. I brought it down today inside the CRV and uh, the 10 horsepower, although it is a little bit heavier in its category than some of its competitors, you still can manhandle it on your own. I would say that for its category it is on the heavier side, but I quite like the idea that it's from a brand which is synonymous with reliability. 
You can fit a number of different people in here. We've had a, a couple of kids and a couple of blokes. With the 15 litre fuel tank that comes with this engine, uh, we've got no fuel figures obviously, but we've done so much boating. So to give you an idea on one tank of fuel, I've gone from Torquay to Dartmouth and back uh, with loads of caving, so about 35 miles on that day. I've done some British waterways uh, with the Tiverton Canal and on the Thames, all on that one tank. So you don't really have to think about uh, fuel. I think we used uh, about six litres uh, going from Torquay to Dartmouth and back on a full day of boating on a little boat like this. Um, the other night I took it across from Torquay to Brixham to do some fishing and the fuel level was pretty much identical in the tank. So for entry level boating, this uh, makes a really viable, cost-effective way to get afloat and get started boating. So it's rated for four adults, can carry a max load of 735 kilos, has a maximum horsepower of 15 horsepower or 60 kilos of outboard. I would say personally, after using this with a couple of people on it, I'd go with the 15 horsepower. The 10 horsepower is fine for two people or one adult and a couple of kids. But by the time that you put two adults in there and a good amount of kit to have a full day, I'd go with the 15. It's gonna give you that little bit more planing speed. And uh, I was in a little bit of a swell the other day. And although it was still planing, it just lacked a little bit of guts um, crawling up the next wave. So 15 horsepower, I think would be an ideal package. Having said that, this engine is a press engine. It came to us from a Honda demo session with a load of other journalists and uh, not PBR TV ones, I'll have to say. Um, so the propeller is dinged a little bit. Um, the uh, pitch looks pretty much intact, but it has got a couple of chips and stuff in there. So it's gonna cavitate a little bit more and have a little less performance, but I'd still say 15 horsepower is where you wanna really be on something like this if you're not just one up. So some of the great features of this boat is that you've got this uh, spray hood, which is detachable just from a couple of pieces of elastic. It's got a uh, netted, um, zipped up uh, little compartment in the front as well, which isn't a, a dry bag, but it's great for uh, putting some bits throughout your day. You have your 15 litre fuel tank that sits up in the nose to help with the weight distribution. Then the fuel line neatly goes into two Velcro pockets along the side, and then that goes up into the engine. So simple, simple as to use. Just open obviously the breather on the fuel tank, make sure you've got loads of fuel, prime it on the bulb, and then you'll be ready to go. Other than that, there's not much more that can go wrong or explain really about this boat. It's got some little davit points on the transom and some lifting eyes that have been glued onto the tubes. So if you want to have it on a bathing platform of a larger boat or something like that, then uh, that is also um, easy to do or um, have at the end of your garden or something like that. Um, so other than that, 15 litre fuel tank, 10 horsepower engine, make sure you wear your life jacket. I use also the Velcro on the fuel lines just to clip in my Icom VHF while we're at sea, just making sure that we're safe. What a great way to get boating. This is a super affordable package. You can roll it up in your car and you can do about 20 mile an hour and have great fun with kids and use it a lot more than just some people do buying it as a tender. If you wanna see more of what we got up to on that small little Han wave, I'll be uploading a video in the next week or so. Likewise, in the last edition just gone of PBR, there are articles in there about different adventures in little boats, offering some great inspiration for micro boating. So if you haven't got a, a version of the print format, then you can jump onto powerboatandrib.com and get your free online digital subscription. Now we're moving on to Dometic Marine who have just unveiled their new electric power assist steering system. It's an affordable, easy to install system that greatly reduces steering effort. It's been engineered for mechanically steered boats with single outboard power from 90 horsepower to 200 horsepower. It integrates with an existing C-Star rack or rotary cable steering system. So there is no need to install a whole new steering setup. It also works with either standard or tilt helms and easily mounts to all major outboard brands. The new system reduces steering effort to levels similar to Dometic's electronic power steering. 
with quick responses to the wheel while providing consistent steering from lock to lock. Once installed, the mechanical steering cable moves only the power assist unit, while the electronic steering actuator turns the engine. It's mounted on the transom bracket um, on the outboard and the only rigging needed is the power feed. This system differs vastly from other brands of electronic helm systems because it does not increase the load on the mechanical steering helm or cable. This is claimed to ensure reliable, long-term performance in harsh on the water conditions. Well, what if it fails, however? In the event that the power assist unit stops functioning, a fail-safe system is automatically reverted to the standard mechanical steering, which I think is pretty neat. And you know then that if there are any failures, you can still get home to port safely. Now, this system is designed for easy installation. So it can be done by your boat dealer, most marine mechanics, or somebody that's con competent in looking after their own boat. It has been carefully designed as a plug and play installation to serve both the OEM and after sales markets. If you want more information on this new Dometic system, then just visit their website or I'll put a link in the description below. Now, keeping with the theme of easy maneuverability on your boat, whether that be electronic steering or other means, a new Finnish company, NaviWheel, aims to make child's play of mooring up your boat. The ever popular joystick ways of moving around your boat, like IPS or JPO, are now facing competition from a groundbreaking and innovative steering system, which promises to give the likes of Mercury's JPO system and others a run for their money. With this intuitive user interface, NaviWheel provides easy and precise boat control. Using the latest hardware, software technology, and in conjunction with AI, and on top of that, NaviWheel's network connection, berthing does not get much easier. Now, what's this all about? So, the boat is steered by using the mini NaviWheel, which looks a really smart little device. This resembles a small steering wheel and can be mounted anywhere on your boat. Steering with the NaviWheel makes the boat react instantly. So, mastering the system has no learning curve. The setup consists of a physical user interface, the Mini NaviWheel, a compact four jet system with advanced algorithms, external sensors, and data all managed by AI. The system is also connected to the NaviWheel cloud, enabling continuous maintenance and updates to the system. A newly released NaviWheel app makes your mobile phone a secondary steering wheel through the touchscreen control on your iPhone. This enables you to berth the boat away from the helm, even remotely on the dock side, which they say in their marketing blurb, but really I would be cautious about jumping off your boat to then moor it. I would use this but probably maybe on an aft deck with a wheelhouse, etc., where you can have a little bit more um, visibility of what's going on. But it's perfect for the single crewed skippers. The app can also obtain updates for further improvements as and when they get uploaded. The NaviWheel system uses new technology components in its electrical motors and compact jet drives. These jet drives effectively sit on the four corners of the boat, providing independent thrust with the aft pair being able to vector, moving sideways, crabbing sideways, forward, aft, or turning on the spot should all be blissfully easy. Introduced to the market by G Boats, a Finnish company, the pilot phase of the Navi wheel has just been successfully completed through this summer. Marketing is now ongoing with an eye on partnerships with boat builders and manufacturers to uh, tie up at the OEM phase. So hopefully we will see uh, more of this on new craft and be able to put it through its paces. I can't wait to personally give it a try and see if it lives up to its claims. When we do, we will make sure we bring a camera along so that you guys can find out how we got on and how the kit lives up to its claims. Now, last week, we ran an amazing giveaway prize. That was obviously the Simrad Cruise 5-inch GPS display, a perfect 
uh, entry level GPS for most small boats. And we had an amazing amount of interest on this competition. And after running the names through our online prize winner generator thing online, where we put all the names into a, basically an online hat, Stuart Richards came out on top. Well done, Stuart. To claim, please just email the social at powerboatandrib.com email address and we will send it out to you. We have a little bit more filming to do on this. I'm away for a couple of days on a boat test, but once I get back, um, we should be um, done with this one and then we will get it sent out to you. It won't be rigged to a boat, so don't panic. It will still be brand new in its box. It will just be bench test here. Runner up was Paul Mitchell. Congratulations, Paul. You have won a 12 month subscription to PBR, helping to keep you up to date with the best toys for your Tornado rib. Now, on to a service announcement. We run the new show now every week for the past nine weeks. To get it up and running and to play with the format, taking lots of feedback from you guys and the industry. We're pleased that we get emails sent to us almost every day with positive comments and feedback. And thank you wholeheartedly for your support as we've started this um, area of our digital platforms. We're gonna change things up though a little bit as we um, go in and add more things into our weekly content. You may have seen in the latest issue that has just been launched, our Beyond the Horizon campaign. This is backed by Land Rover, by Axopar, by MDL Marinas, Simrad and Van Klaas and various other partners. Now this is a series of adventure content showing you guys how to expand your boating and highlighting incredible destinations in the UK with the aim of putting out a video once a month. In addition, I'm working with Paul Glatzel to bring our training videos back, bigger and better than before. These you may have seen from our live sessions where we went through different breakdown aspects of say like a PB2 and went through these different things, perfect for beginners and as a refresher course. We love creating weekly content for you and likewise, don't wanna miss out on bringing you other great content each week due to the masses of workload for one person as I do the writing, the filming and the video editing for this new show and, and all of our other videos. I think, I think I've got about 18 videos currently in the pipeline for you guys. So what I plan to do to adjust things up a little bit is that we will not stop bringing you weekly content. In fact, we're gonna build upon it. We will be now making the new show monthly, but each week we will then add in other features. So these will be interviews with industry leaders, boat tests, our Beyond the Horizon films, tech reviews, our tuition stuff with Paul, and a lot more. That way we can build upon the new platform that we've created and enhance the content so that we can get things out to you every week and a whole different variety of topics. Thank you to everybody that subscribed and we are now busy filming with some very cool content to roll out in the weeks to come. In fact, tomorrow I'm on a flight to Helsinki for some very special projects and uh, these will be uh, shown to you very soon. Likewise, Paul is primed with our Axopar. It's already in Dorset for us to start filming our tuition again too upon my return. So although next week we'll have a slightly different video for you, the new show isn't going anywhere. We're just adapting our format so that we can bring you more content within the month. Likewise, we're not gonna stop with our giveaways. So there'll be plenty of opportunities to get your hands on lots of goodies on every single new show that we air each month. So for this week, that's it for now. Thank you for watching and we will see you again next week. A massive thank you to MDL Marinas who have sponsored this show. Next week, we have a really cool video for you. I'm not gonna give away too much yet, but it's very cool indeed and we hope that you'll enjoy it. When it comes to successful marina operations, MDL offers incredible experience and expertise. These are the guys that have sponsored the show and made the new show possible for us. Established in 1973, they are now the UK's leading marina and water-based leisure provider and one of Europe's largest marina groups, currently operating 20 major marinas and boatyards, which are home to over 7,000 berths. 
they've also added two idyllic holiday parks to their collection, providing the perfect getaway by the water. Find out more at mdlmarinas.co.uk.